everybody for your virtual field trip. We are here studying Bull Skin Run. This Bull Skin Run flows through our Cool Spring Preserve. We are at the chemistry station of your virtual field trip. And the first test that we're gonna do is dissolved oxygen. Now remember back in class, dissolved oxygen is the amount of oxygen dissolved in water. And we can also call it DO, and it's measured in parts per million. And so, different animals in the water need different levels of dissolved oxygen. We have this nice chart here, and we have that saying, if you have at least five parts per million, you're alive. If you got nine parts per million, you're feeling fine. And if you got 11 parts per million, that's heaven, because you've got so much oxygen, it's like paradise. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the dissolved oxygen levels of Bull Skin Run. I have my handy dandy dissolved oxygen testing kit. Here we go. Perfect. So this is called an ampule and it has a chemical inside that will change colors when the tip of this breaks and it is inserted in a container of water. I'll leave it there, it's gonna suck up the water. It's going to change a color that's going to match one of these other ampules that have already been tested with dissolved oxygen levels that are different. So this light color is dissolved, dissolved oxygen level of one. Whereas if you get down to this darker color, that's dissolved oxygen of 12. Which do you think it matches most? I think it matches an eight. Well, eight is above alive, but we're definitely a good level for fish to live in bull skin run. So our dissolved oxygen level was eight. Now fish need at least five parts per million to be alive, but the ideal range would be between nine and 15. So it's an okay range, but not the ideal range. Time for the next part of your chemistry station. We are going to study the pH of bull skin run. Let's see how much you remember. We have our pH scale. If pH is less than seven, what do we call those liquids? If you said acids, you are correct. Remember, things like Coke, lemon juice, stomach acid, those are all acids. We don't want our water to be too low on the pH scale. What do we call liquids that are above seven? If you said bases or a basic, you are correct. Things like bleach and window cleaner, baking soda, those are all bases. But for fish to live in our stream, we need an ideal range of six and a half to eight for our pH. Let's see what bullskin is. I've got my handy dandy pH testing kit. I'm gonna put water from the stream in this test tube. I'm gonna add drops of this solution to it and it's gonna change color. You ready to see that? Ah, oh, perfect. What I'm going to do is add 10 drops of this indicator solution. Ooh, ready? I'm not going to shake it, but I'm going to nicely flip it upside down over and over again. And as you can see, it is nicely mixed. I'm going to take one of these little cool blocks and I'm going to put the test tube in and I'm going to try to match the color. It's helpful to hold it up to the light. You can see a little bit better. What would you guys say? 8.5 for our pH? I think so. This is our data sheet. So we know that the pH was 8. 0.5. That is higher than 7, so that's a little bit basic. Is that ideal for fish? Well, fish need a pH between 6.5 and, and 8, so it's a little bit too high. Hmm. So now we're going to check on the temperature of bull skin run because fish and aquatic creatures need a temperature of about 50 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Somewhere in that range is ideal for those fish. So, we're going to use one of these thermometers to check our temperature. And have put the thermometer in. Can you guys read what number that is? So we have 58 degrees Fahrenheit, right in that ideal temperature range. So, what kind of grade will I give this stream? Its pH was a little bit high, dissolved oxygen was right in the middle, and the temperature was ideal. I'd give our stream probably an A minus. 
For the next part of your virtual field trip, we're going to be exploring what lives in Bullskin Run. But first, I have to get suited up to get in the creek. Aha! Now that I look like a potato, I'm ready to go. Let's review what is a macroinvertebrate. A lot of flying insects that you might see actually lay their eggs in the water. This is a mayfly, and this is its baby, the mayfly nymph. The mayfly nymph lives in the bottom of the stream, and that is a macroinvertebrate. So what I have here is something called a D-net, shaped like the letter D. And what I'm going to be doing is using this to try to collect critters that are on the bottom of the stream. So I'm going to start looking for them over here where the water is moving really fast. This is called a ripple. With that churning water, there's more dissolved oxygen in the ripple. So that's a great place for macroinvertebrates to hang out. So what I'm going to be doing is using my D-net to bump along the bottom of the stream and try to see if any critters wash down from upstream. So I already got something. Not a macroinvertebrate. This is actually a vertebrate. This is called a sculpin. It's a bottom feeder fish. So another way I can try to get macroinvertebrates is by kind of stirring up the substrate above my net. So what I'm using my foot to do is kind of scrape around and see if I can dislodge any critters on the bottom. So with that, I found this guy and this little guy right here. So what I also am going to do is I'm going to use this scrub brush and I'm going to scrub the bottom of rocks to see if I can dislodge any more critters. I'm going to do it right in front of my net. So I found a really tiny fish in this catch and what looks like to be eggs. And what I'm going to do is I'm, everything I find that is the same as these little eggs, I'm going to put with the eggs and anything I find that's like the fish, I'll put with the fish. Go. I'm also gonna be looking along the edge where there's plants because a lot of fish and critters like to hide in the plants and the roots. So I'm just gonna bump along here, bumpity bumpity bump. So since it's so hard to see if there's anything in here, what I can do is I can turn my net upside down in this dish and kind of rinse it out like that and then see if something's wiggling in there. There are some teeny little things moving around in there. I would never have found that if I just left them in the net though. Yeah, I found a little salamander. So this is a log that I found in the water. I can just turn it over and notice, it's just like a little stick sticking out, right? But actually each of these are what we call case building caddisflies. Inside this, there are little critters called caddisflies. They make themselves a little case out of sticks and rocks, and they cling onto things in the water. So this one is holding on. He just went inside there. Now that I've collected my sample of macroinvertebrates, what I can do now is I can use a key to identify them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tally up what I find on this sheet. Because what's really cool about macroinvertebrates is depending on what we find, we can determine the water quality of the stream. See how we have three groups, a green group, a yellow group, and a red group? If we find a lot of things in the green group, which is the sensitive group, then we can say that our stream is pretty healthy. So let's see how bull skin run is. Let's try this guy first. So with our key, we start at the very top. And we first start with the option shell or no shell. Well, this guy definitely has no shell, so we follow that down. Does he have legs or no legs? He definitely has legs. Legs. Does he have 10 or more legs, four pairs or three pairs? Two, four, six legs or three pairs of legs? Okay, so three pairs of legs. Does he have wings or no wings? No wings. Does he have no obvious tails? One or two or three tails? I wouldn't call that a tail. So we're gonna go with no obvious tails. Then we're gonna look at each of these. Do any of these look like my guy in here? I think so. The one that says dragonfly. Let's check it out. Large body, hinged mouth. Hmm. So I'm gonna tally off dragonflies. He's in group one. Continuing to use the key, I determined that these guys are what we call damselflies. They are over here because they had three tails. And there's our damselfly. One two, three, four. So this guy's a mayfly. 
and so are these. They're just a different kind. Really cool adaptation they have is they have gills that they flutter in the water to bring in oxygen. You can actually see him fluttering his gills right now. Mayflies are also sensitive to pollution and they are in group one. One, two, three. This guy looks a lot like a mayfly, but it's actually a stonefly. For our snails, let's try this. No shell, shell? Single shell or double? Definitely a single shell. Then here's the key part. It depends on which way the spiral opens. My snail definitely opens on the left. So it's a pouch snail. It opens to the left, each pouch snail is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we have these guys. Interesting looking. Going through the key, they have no shell, they have legs, they've got three pairs, they do not have wings. Do they have tails? Let's take a look. He definitely looks like he's got two tails. That is a caddisfly larva. Dark head, green to tan body, two brush-like tails. Perfect. I've got seven of those. And then some of my favorites. This is a case-building caddisfly. Oh, there he is walking around with his case. So we've got four case-building caddisflies. One, two, three, four. And what about this little guy? This is a beetle of some sort. A beetle. That right there is a black fly. What they do is they attach themselves to the bottom of the stream and they just kind of hang in there and wiggle around waiting for food to catch. Black flies are in group two. They're somewhat sensitive to pollution. Now what scientists do is they look at what they caught and they can give an assessment of the stream based on what they found. Did we find a lot in group one? Yes, we did. That means it's healthy enough for those guys to survive. Even though we found stuff in group three, that's okay because they can live in any water. So if we found stuff in group one, that's a good indication of good water quality. So bull skin run is pretty healthy. The last thing to do on our virtual field trip is to let our lovely macro birds go. And I'm gonna try to put them back in the places. I was closest to where I found them. There you go, little guys. So considering the chemistry of bullskin run showed us that it was an A minus. And when we studied the biology of the creek or the macroinvertebrates and fish, we found that the water quality is good enough to support sensitive organisms. So looking at those two studies that we did, we can say that bullskin run is a healthy stream. Thanks for joining me on your virtual field trip. Now, if you've got a stream near you, go ahead out and see if you can find any macroinvertebrates. If you don't have a net, that's okay. Pick up rocks, logs, even leaves, and see if anything's living underneath. Have fun!